Hi, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one took precedent over the other people waiting to come through. I have a line waiting to come through, but he kind of swooped in and took front and center stage. And when they're talking that loudly, it's not really any point in bringing anyone else through because they won't be quiet. And I'm talking about the late actor River Phoenix. And this has been a much requested video by all of you all. And when I was looking at his chart, which I found really interesting, he is born on August 23rd, 1970. He died October 31st after 1 a.m. in the morning, Halloween 1993. What I noticed immediately off his chart, and I know there's a lot of people that talk astrology and cusps, and what if I'm born on the cusp? Okay, the cusp, and I'm gonna say this just while we're starting this because he's a good example of it. The cusp of an astrology chart is the divider of the pie. So when you're looking at the wheel of an astrology chart, the house divisions are what we call the cusp and the degrees on the cusp mean certain things. But as a person, when it's your birthday, depending on your place and time of birth, obviously your entire birthday, but the place and the time, you are either 29 degrees and 47 seconds of a sign or you are zero zero degrees one minute into the sign. You are not on the cusp. Now the energies will overlap, but those beginning and ending degrees are extremely important. They really cement the personality. And River Phoenix was one of those people. Now just looking at his face, he looks very Virgo to me. Just the face, not the hair, the face. Um, he has certain way of looking. I, Virgo and Gemini, when you see it in the rising or the sun, can look very similar in the face, but there is a similar look to it. Anyway, he was 13 minutes into the sign of Virgo. So he was a Virgo sun with an early five degree Scorpio rising and the moon in the seventh house conjuncting Saturn in Taurus. Now that really struck me because what I do when I'm opening up with somebody, I will always, now the reason I do this, I've explained this. The reason I do this is because early on in my career, people would ask me to read on street corners at parties and hair salons, nail salons, wherever. And it was always a lot of noise. So I could never really sit there and meditate and focus on the energy. For me, if I ask your birth date, I'm able to harness your energy right away. So I'll be like, say your name and your birth date. It's not that you can actually do an astrology chart from somebody saying their birth date, but in River Phoenix's case, I actually looked up his natal chart and he has a grand cross. So he's got the sun, moon, Neptune, and the North node in a grand cross, hitting every aspect of his chart. Basically his lineage on a DNA level and what he came to the earth to do, which is directly tied to his mother. So his legacy as a famous actor and his personality and what he experienced in his life, and there's so much around this young man, Another one that died, I think he was 23 when he died. And I'm gonna say this, all right? I will say this. His moon is at 29 degrees and some seconds of Taurus. That is a horrific degree in a chart. It is an aspect, um, it's called the Seven Sisters for lack of a way, it's uh, the, the asteroid or the star, the fixed star is Pallades and it's the seven sisters and it's a constellation, okay? It means a lot of tragedy around the life due to homicidal aspects. The 29th degree in Taurus is violent. This child died from a violent act. Now I know they reported a drug overdose for sure, okay? So we know this because it was reported. Not that we believe the media or the news all the time, however, the the um what was reported about that is that he had overdosed and he died in the hospital but i would say a drug overdose could be considered self-harm self-violence that's true but this is different okay i started to get a really eerie feeling with him it was very eerie he began to show me through his childhood and it it he took me down this winding road in a way that was interesting, was um, eclectic, was many different things coming together to make him who he was. What he says to me is when he was living his life as a child, as a small person, as a young person, 
he thought that these things were happenstance. He thought that these things were like normal things. So in other words, I grew up in this community. I meet these people. My life extends because my parents raised me this way. You know, this happened. But it's not the case. He's telling me it's not the case. He was predestined. He's showing me a lifetime of I was picked to come in and I was orchestrated and pushed to play this karma out. Now, I had this discussion with a lot of people about karma. What is karma? Usually people will say to me, well, so-and-so did me wrong. They're going to get their karma. And I'm like, that's presenting it from the ego standpoint. Because again, we never know where the karma starts. Did you start it? Did they start it? Did it happen in a past life? Did it happen 10 lifetimes ago? Did it happen in their past life? And then they're doing it to you, although they're probably not supposed to. Whatever it is, I don't think karma works that way. I think karma is bad. Balance. But in his case, what I saw was that this was for sure a fated, fated life. The life path and the projection, he came in specifically through his mother and through her family lineage and Akashic records, okay? They're tied together. Their books are tied together. He's literally showing me that with the mother, he was bound. I don't mean that in a witchcraft way. I mean that in a karma way. I don't know how else to describe it. So he came in to fulfill something that the mother started in a past life. And I'm not blaming the mother. God knows we mother types get blamed for every damn thing on the planet. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying these two souls, and she could have been a man in the last time and he could have been a woman. I don't know. I didn't look into it that way. I'm just kind of going on what he's saying. But he said the two of them were connected together in this energy. And this energy was extremely, um, forceful on his life and he carried a lot of her shame her sadness her depression her mindset her past lives her releasing and bringing in and releasing and bringing in he brought a lot of that with him through her so he's showing me these two souls in tandem he's very much connected to the mother energy for real okay very very much connected and i'm talking on a soul level from when he came through her body Okay, so let's get to the beginning because his life goes the gamut of different expressions. I mean, extreme expressions. It's interesting that he is a Scorpio rising and that the family changed their last name to Phoenix because of course the Phoenix is the elevated example of the sign of Scorpio. As you know, Scorpio can be extreme. It can be from the scorpion that bites you and attacks you, the little things in the desert with their tails, stings you, poisons you, kills you, drags you back under a rock and annihilates you, to the gray lizard that just is aware and observant of everything and very peaceful, more along the lines of shamanic energy. And then you have the phoenix that rises out of the ashes through its own devastation. So that's like being a complete screw off in life and being annihilated and then picking yourself up with nothing and elevating. So the family actually changed their name to Phoenix, which is kind of interesting because he really is a Scorpio rising. So that would be one of the mascots or one of the representatives of the sign Scorpio. Now, what I get with him is he's talking about his early life. Like I mean way early life. He's showing me himself as a little kid really cute as a little kid and really um <laughs> kind of scrubby looking uh <laughs> kind of scrubby reminds me of oliver twist but with an american version of it kind of kind of scrubby looking kind of scruffy looking uh a lot has been written about his childhood and the poverty this is what he says and i kind of looked at that with it I think he was really happy in his life as a little kid before he realized exactly what was involved in his life. So I see him like he's kind of dirty. He's wearing a little bit of dirty clothes. He's got the dirt on his face, but he's a real pale little face anyway and that light hair. But he didn't know anything was wrong. He certainly loved his family, loved, loved his family. And if you know anything about the family, which is not what he's telling me, but it's what I've read, they joined a cult. They traveled to Venezuela. They did all kinds of things. Now, this is what he's saying. This is where he interjects. So when you think of a hippy dippy family like this and they run off and they do the missionary thing, they join the cults of God or whichever one it was, some other cult, and they go to, you know, Caracas, Venezuela, they, they do that and they do missionary work and they do all kinds of things. You're leaving yourself open 
to a cult mentality. All of these cults around the world kind of have that same thing. We need to be of service and there's a manipulation and a control and there's, there's blind trust and faith. So all of that was involved, but he's saying scratch that. Okay, scratch that because that's not what was defining about it. His mother and father found the cult because it was part of the fated path that he was supposed to be in. Okay, it's not like he ended up where he was because of how he was raised. He ended up where he was because he was supposed to be there and the family was led there through the the DNA and the Akashic records of what was supposed to happen in this life. Now you are not bound by your books, but he was bound because he didn't know that. He was freaking 23 when he died, okay? And an awful death. Now I'm gonna add elements to that as I go because he wants me to talk about the childhood and not get to the death part. The death part, there's so many different elements. There's, there's self behavior and then there's definitely homicide connected to it. The two are connected. There's things that people don't know. There were, there were enemies from past lives. There were all kinds of things. This was a very extreme, extreme life for this person. Now he's talking about being very young and blaming the cults. Okay. Where the parents took him on his sexual abuse as a child. Okay. So being raped as a young child under the age of five, he's blaming the parents for where they chose to be. That's what he did when he was alive. But now that he can see that's not really what was going on, something, and I'm gonna say this because he's saying it, okay? Something about his soul path in this life led him back to those parents who would facilitate where he needed to go. Understand when we're on the other side, we have choices with families we can come into, people that we have karma with at certain times. Obviously, if I'm a baby now, my kids can't choose to come through me because you know I'm not old enough to have babies or if I'm too old or whatever. But in this particular instance, he picked those parents because of a lifetime needing to be repeated because of what happened in the past life and with his mother in particular. This was also part of her karma, okay? Meaning the two of them had to work this out. So River picked them. We all pick our parents, this is my belief, okay, and reincarnation wise, but this was different. The two of them are bound together. They, they, they travel in tandem like this, okay? So they were bound together. What I am seeing with him is that the child abuse, the rape that he describes, and this is what he's saying to me, that he describes at the age of four in the cult by another cult member was not, okay, yes, it's rape, it wasn't just a pedophilic thing. It wasn't just a child molester. It wasn't just an asshole raping children because he had access to children. This was different. I believe from what I'm feeling over here that River Phoenix was actually born into what we want to call an Illuminati family because it was predestined. That's what this cult was really about. Now, whether the parents were aware of it or acting on an unconscious soul urge in order to play out and learn why you'd want to play that out, I don't know. Please don't ask me that because I really don't have those answers. I'm just kind of going along with what I'm seeing. This is where he started. So they were making him ready to do what they needed him to do, okay? So this is what I'm getting. This is really what I'm getting with this. There was something about the family unit that was in play from a past life. Now, I don't know whether he knew that when he was alive because he's kind of shaking his head no. So I'm going to say no with that. And I also feel like his death, I don't know why I'm saying this, but it was so hollow for him. It was so hollow. The other side was promised to be so much. He's saying that. That's coming out of freaking nowhere. He's saying the other side was promised to be so much. I assume he's talking about the cult and what they talked about, like when you die, when you go back to God, when you go back here. But he's saying it was so hollow and so, um, he's showing me when he stepped out of his body. He literally stepped out. Okay, so now we're going to go to that. I have to go to all the stuff in between, but I'm going to go to that right now. When he stepped out of his body, he stepped into a position where um, he basically looked around him and could see nothing. It was just like, I'm over there. So this was not something he did on purpose with the exception that if you're going to go shooting up shit and smoking shit and drinking shit and popping shit, 
you're probably gonna run the risk of ODing. If you don't, you're just lucky. But if you do any kind of drug like that, you're, you know it, we all know it, we all know people that have OD'd, we know it all the time. So there's no surprise there but he's showing me his connections. And he was connected in all these different areas. Like he had his hands in everything. Okay, so there's the acting, there's the music, there's the philanthropy. He's showing me everything and that's part of what goes on. They give of themselves in order to basically present themselves in a certain way. He switches immediately over to his choice of diet, which was vegetarian, okay? And says, this was an act of defiance. I have no idea what that means because I'm assuming you eat what you like, but he's basically saying that this was an act of defiance. So there was eating issues with him and emotions around food. I actually feel like he may have been a vegetarian because he couldn't get his hands on the food that he wanted to eat when he was younger. And there were some emotional scars with that that didn't allow him to eat other foods. Like, and it's connected to the mother again, okay? It's connected to the mother. He's also showing me that the mother was used in a sexual way in the cult as well. I've not read that anywhere, I've not looked into that, but that's what he's also showing me. So I'm seeing that around him. Um, he's looking through his death process and he's saying there were so many people involved in what was going on with him and what was going on around him. Nobody was listening to him and yet at the same time, he was unaware of what he was saying. So he was saying certain things in his life, in his circumstance, and he was actually unaware of what was going on around him. So it's like he was on autopilot or emotionally numb. Now the drug thing is interesting. That started as fun and games and he started really young with that, but it was all in the plan is what he's saying now. This is what they do. This was the family circumstance. You can't raise kids like that and not expect them to go over here and be like this. That's what he's saying. He's saying, of course, this was a setup on a soul level, not, not, I'm sure everybody here, see, this is the problem with karma when I'm talking to people. I understand that there's karma. This is always my problem with karma because my understanding is, you know, if you do A, there's B and there's like action, reaction, action, reaction, karma. So if in a past life you do something wrong and you come back and then you come into this life, you have the choice to do to the other person what they did to you. That's how they presented it. I don't believe this for one second. I don't believe it for one second. These two people, River Phoenix and his mother, tumbled back into this life with karma attached, bound and wound from their behavior in the past. Both of them tumbled onto the earth as mother and son and carried out the karma again and couldn't stop it. And we don't have recognition here. We don't know. If you ask me what my karma is, I couldn't freaking tell you. I can see bits and pieces of a past life. I can see certain circumstances. I can see behaviors. I can see a trend with every single person in my life, like how I'm treated and how I treat them and the perception of it. But do I understand where it came from? Hell no, I don't. And I've meditated, I've asked, I don't think it works that way, but I can see these two in tandem in this life. And I'm talking about River and his mother. No one else in the family around, it's River and his mother. These two are together, they're together, and they're tumbling like this. So getting back to the night that he passed. Okay, so what he's showing me, he's showing me this, this huge life, like it's huge for a little kid, really. He's just at 23, what the hell do you know? You don't know shit. And he's had all this fame and now he's gonna play in his band and he was at the Viper Room, which is like a little Hollywood landmark, but it's super small and super tiny and you can't really get lost in that bathroom. So everybody in the club had to know what he was doing over there because it's just so small and so tiny that when you see someone high, you're gonna see them walk in or out because it's Captain Obvious, okay? But what I'm seeing with him is he's showing me over here the people he was dealing with, and he's showing me over here those that were envious and jealous. So there's two ways in which he died. 
Um, there are very famous people around him. One very famous musician in particular. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. When he was in the hospital, when he was dying or ODing or they couldn't stop him, they did stop him. Somebody else helped him over the edge. There's a hot shot connected in there. Okay, so there's a hot shot. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a hot shot before he went to the hospital. I'm seeing a second hot shot in the hospital. So I actually believe he died from foul play at the hands of his own play, which is a double-edged sword because if you didn't do A, they couldn't do B to you, but because you trusted and did A, you were led down this path. So again, you sometimes have to watch your friends, even if you're in an industry where you all do the same thing. He's showing me the cutthroatness. Now there is a musician over here that kind of has, and I'm gonna describe him, I'm not going to name names. You can all guess in the box down there, but there is a musician and he's a graphic musician. Okay. Meaning his music is graphic. He's probably close to my age now in his fifties. Of course, River would be born in the seventies. He'd be close to his fifties now too. Um, forties, whatever, late forties. Um, there's a musician, his haircut is like a bowl cut to me. Um, he's kind of a wild man. Uh, He's with a band that's named after a food and he's named after a bug. <laughs> kind of, kind of, I don't know. Um, I'm just kind of going, maybe he's not named after a bug. I take that back. Anyway, he's in a band. You know what? Who knows? I guess he's in a band that's named after a piece of food. <laughs> That'll give you a hint. He's showing me him and he's putting a big cross over there. Like, dude, back it up. Okay, this guy's not a good good dude. Not a good dude. Not a good, I don't care what his music's like. I don't care that he's sober now. Not a good dude. Manipulative, um, sacrificial, uh, exploitive, sexualizing younger people. I'm seeing all of that on him over here. Then I go over here to this side and I see an actor. Both of these men have brown hair and I see an actor over here. I think we know who this actor is because I definitely know who it is and there is a colossal amount of jealousy and envy with this person. And I'm not, I'm actually not going to name names. I'm just going to say that River Phoenix was getting jealousy and envy from both sides because his own soul energy was starting to shine through and he wasn't following, this was his emotional issue. This is why he was gulping back drugs like a fiend because on an emotional level, he was unable and too sensitive to express what was going on around him and in denial about it. Now keep in mind, Virgo is very much up in their head and they're very, very myopically focused one way. So when you have anybody with Virgo in their chart or a loaded sixth house or a bunch of Virgo planets in a particular house, you're going to get a myopic focus and you're going to get a focus going only one way. So River Phoenix was very much like that. His focus was on what was in front of him at the moment without thought to the peripheral. Virgo is so like that. Now, Virgo, and I know y'all are gonna, you know, disagree or whatever, but to me, from 30 plus years, 35 years of doing psychic work with astrologers, with psychics, with mediums, with tarot card readers, with pendulum swingers, with crazy exorcist people, channels, doesn't matter. All of them, every single one of them had prominent Virgo in their chart when they work in this business. So there is something to be said for the psychic logical ability of Virgo and River definitely had that. He couldn't even trust the people in his own family. There was setups from people in female form from other families. He's showing me two females. One is not his girlfriend. One is somebody that he has sex with, but not his girlfriend. She's older. Okay, she's over here. She goes both too. She goes music. She goes movie. She goes movie. She goes music. I think she was music first and then movie. Then there's the girlfriend connected to a Hollywood family extreme Hollywood family. They're all connected. He was born to experience this. It was, okay, what he's showing me is that in his birth process with his mother, meaning the two of them, she's pregnant, so she has to agree to that. He comes through her, he has to agree to that. They agreed to it because they were bound from their actions in a past life. So there wasn't free will, there was fated, fated destiny. 
which is terrifying to me. I actually do think our lives are very fated. Not necessarily do we have free will the way we think. We have free will to act in circumstances the way that we feel comfortable. That's what we have. We have free will in that capacity, but not in other capacities. So when I'm looking at the energy of this, this was faded. He was pushed down this path and he saw it, but how he's showing me is, okay, now that's just a weird thing to say. He's showing me a past life where he was, I'm going to use the word, a robed priest. I don't know what else to say. I have no idea what religion I'm speaking of, but he was robed. He was of service and of sacrifice in a religious sense from a past life. And there were behaviors hidden behind the robe, hidden cloaked behind it, where he was over here. So the theology of how he lived that life and the expression is what popped into this life and why he experienced what he did. This is kind of what he's showing me. So the robed, the robed priest is what it is. He's showing me a priest. I almost wonder if he was a druid priest on some level. Kind of what it looks like. I don't think I'm speaking Catholic. I might be wrong. It could be in an old, old time frame, but I'm just getting the image of it. Um, he's showing me that and he's showing his mother. Okay. Interesting. He kept his mother in bondage in a past life as a young girl. She was kept for him. She was kept for him. Okay. Hard to explain, but sometimes we give birth to our exes, our husbands, our daughters, our cousins, our, our enemies, our children. We marry our children from a past life. I know it sounds weird. I'm talking in different bodies, different time frame, different soul. We have no recollection of it. He's showing me his mother. I don't know if he put her in the cage or she was there, but they were connected like this. Maybe from what I'm feeling and I'm trying to get a feel because he's kind of stepping away from this. Like I don't want people to know this, but I almost feel like he turned his back on his mother in a past life because of the circumstances and the robe and the priest part of him that he was, I almost feel like he turned his back on her and left her tied up, left her cage, left her hostage. And in this life, boom, it's switched. And suddenly now he's that way in a different way. That's what I'm seeing. So with River Phoenix, this is along the lines of what I'm seeing. So he's showing me this. And he's showing me that he didn't understand growing up. He thought he was in control of his life and he's shaking his head. I had no control, none whatsoever, because it was so down a particular path. This person, female over here, the female, the older female, older to him, okay? So maybe she was only like six years older back then, but that's a lot when you're 23. Um, the older one over here, she was chattering away. The day that he died is the homicide is what he's saying. So the day in which he died is part of the homicide ritual. This is what he's saying. He's, he's saying it. Yes, I know he overdosed, but there were people that were ignoring what was going on over here. And then he ended up over here. And there is somebody over here. And I swear to you, not even joking, that gave him a hot shot. This person is a male actor. This person is a male actor and there is a, a hot shot, meaning they injected him with something that was too much of a drug. Now you can die from any drug. You could even die from a bee sting. We know this, but this is different. He was in the process of overdosing and this threw him over the edge. The other brunette man over here who's a singer, could be an actor, but no singer. I know who it is. I don't think he's done acting. He was sent to finish the job. And then a female is in the middle of this. There's many things going on. He had many people quote after him or after the soul. This was playing out like underneath the surface. And he's such like a, a vanilla looking kid. Like there was nothing, you know, there wasn't a whole bunch of tattoos. He didn't like have a bunch of piercings. You know, he wasn't running around like a meth head on the street. None of that. So kind of interesting, but this is what I'm seeing. I'm going to stop the video right now because the energy just went out, but I am going to do a second video on this, but I got that part out. So again, I was speaking about the late actor River Phoenix 
and my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.